Hello and a very good day to all our viewers and welcome to another episode of Market Watch. My name is Ranu De Silva. Hi, I'm Shadia Jannat. Right. Uh, today uh, we have a special segment. We are talking about uh, about the market participation in general, uh, and uh, Shadi bring uh, one of our good trading experts. Uh, he'll be discussing about trading strategies and how we could uh, manage our trading. So, Shadi, I mean, uh, if you look at the capital markets uh, overall and the equity market, I mean, I'm noticing a very low market uh, participation by locals. You know, if you look at uh, Australia. The UK, you are looking at about 40 to 30 percent market participation. But when it comes down to countries, I mean Sri Lanka specifically, we have about a 2.3 percent market participation, and it's it's there because you know there's a lot of opportunity in the in the market. You know, especially in the equity market, in the capital markets. I mean, if you look at uh, the uh, the Treasury bill rate. Uh, if you look at annual, uh, the, the 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 one year bill rate, uh, you are looking at about uh, for the last tw 2016, uh, you are looking at about 10 percent return on average. Average. Uh, you will notice a 10 percent return. So, uh, I mean, uh, it's true. Uh, if you look at the ASPI return for 2016, uh, it 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 was a negative return. So we saw market losing uh, about 9.45 percent. But however, but I want to highlight was that if you saw the uh, the performers in the market, you know, uh, I'm talking about good counters where most of the research houses will be covering and where they're fundamentally strong. You know, I'm looking at counters like Colombo store, coal stores, Hamas, Alumex, Hem Alumex yeah. exactly. You know, TJL. So these are some of the very good performers in the in the market. And if you look at an average return for these companies for the year 2016, you're looking at about a 30% return. So they've obviously outperformed the uh, Colombo Stock Exchange Index as well as any money market product out there. So uh, in the local products, of course. So, uh, so I'm thinking there are a lot more opportunity uh, and why people wouldn't see it. So I mean, Charlie, in your opinion, why, why, why don't the investors see this opportunity? Yeah, no, no, I mean, uh, you spoke about uh, the market participation is very less compared to all these developed capital yes. markets. And also you, you highlighted the stocks which has really outperformed the market, yeah. while the index has uh, uh, index uh, 2016 a negative return of 9%. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, wh I think the mainly the reason is, uh, you know, uh, the low financial literacy and lack of uh, awareness, uh, Ranu. No, okay. If you see, I mean, uh, even uh, like uh, if you take the general investor crowd, uh, they know what's happening to the index. Of course, okay. They, if you talk to them, they know the index uh, uh, has a negative return of uh, negative uh, uh, nine percent. And uh, when we, when we talk to them about these stocks, which has outperformed the market, and this basket has an average uh, return of thirty percent for the two thousand sixteen. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the investors don't see this may mainly because lack of awareness and also the another set, they don't have that uh, financial literacy. Right. So, I think uh, if you merely follow the index, I mean, if you if you won't see this uh, opportunity, the mm -hmm. hidden opportunity. So, I think to, to see this opportunity, to, to make best use of this opportunity, you have to become an active investor, or no? I mean, rather, not a passive investor. Right. So, you have to act to be an active investor to see this opportunity definitely you know something really comes into mind you know something very something uh, something we discussed you know in the past we always looked at an equation for life as you know your income minus your expenses equals your saving i think in a today's context you know in, in today's world we have to add that important factor which is investment yes so it should be our income uh, minus our expenses and minus our investments yeah, should true. equate to our savings. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's how our savings should be. Uh, this thing. Not that I'm not putting any emphasis on savings is important as well. So yeah, that's true, the whole true. equation. So uh, I mean, if you if you look at a, a more active investment, you know, which is the most important. I think we must be more aware of our uh, where our money is going and where we'll be investing. Um, you know, so not just putting it on a, a general return because clearly, like with the numbers we spoke about, you know, thirty percent is quite. Uh, 
attractive yeah. and that's definitely uh, a, a, a possibility for all investors to participate in. So, uh, how Shadi, as, as, a, as a trade as well, I mean, how how do you become an active uh, investor? How what are the what are your pointers for that? Maybe well, well, uh, you, uh, Rano, to be an active investor, you have to master so many skills. I mean, like uh, initially, I would say you have to do your own analysis. I mean, when it comes to the market, uh, you, uh, we know brokers. There are plenty of brokers who provide so much of research material. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you should also be aware of the market. You should know the dynamics. Mm -hmm. You should. So you have to do your own analysis. Yeah, I would definitely, say. Shadi. You know, something that really comes to mind also when I speak to uh, my uh, institutional as well as to the retail clients. But something I always mention is, you know, today when you buy a let's say a, a television, yeah. uh, you know, how much research material that you could personally read, exactly. and you're going to find out what the reviews are like. You're going to read about the spec, and you're not going to just depend on your salesperson for this information. I mean, even the simple things like going to going on a holiday, to going to a restaurant today. So all these things are available, and you do your research. So I, I always say is that when you come to your investments, you got to be that inquisitive as well. Am I right? Or exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Obviously, you have to do your own research. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to understand. I mean, where you're putting your money, you have to understand the dynamics. You have to do your research, mm -hmm. and you should be comfortable enough to put your money. I mean, when it comes to the analysis, I would like to tell. I mean, most of the investors, they just uh, you know, sometimes they do uh, only a fundamental analysis mm -hmm. and they completely ignore the sentimental or the technical analysis. Oh, yes. I mean, when it comes to your investment decision, you should focus all three analysis perspectives. I mean, like the fundamental analysis, the technical analysis, and also the sentimental analysis. Yeah. All three analyses play a major role in your investment. It's yeah. like a three-legged stool where your investment decision yeah. should, uh, should be based on this and the bench becomes very strong and, right. and you have a good trading decision. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ranu, I would like to also to be uh, to be a good active investor you have to have your own trading strategy mm -hmm. I mean once you make your trading uh, I mean uh, you when you do your own analysis once you are done with your analysis you should have your trading strategy where you have to decide the size of your trade then your profit target and let's say if the trade turns against you where mm -hmm. you are going to cut your losses and also the timing of that trade mm -hmm. and uh, and also another factor is Ranu, I mean if you take uh, when it comes to uh, a trader, he has to uh, put ego, uh, weight on uh, money management, trading strategy and the trading psychology. Right. Okay. And also I would like to mention that if, if let's say you have a proper trading strategy and you have a good money management uh, uh, where you decide the risk capital based on your risk appetite mm -hmm. and also your risk reward ratio. And yeah. also, you should have a good uh, trading psychology where it plays a major role. Where, uh, let's say, even if you have a good trading strategy and money management uh, strategy, I mean, uh, without having a good trading psychology, I mean, there's uh, there's less chance of becoming a successful trader. Definitely, I understand. You know, especially about talking about the psychology. Uh, I think you know there's a lot more research done on this trading psychology as well as you know financial psychology, etc. So I think that's a major focus. I think you know I think the top uh, traders do have all these this whole uh, the formula mixed together in the right amounts. So Shadi, I mean, if you look about talk about uh, uh, you know your emotions and controlling your psychology in. in in your opinion, I mean, in, in, uh, how do you manage this, and what are the factors that we should be considering uh, as an investor, somebody getting in onto the market now, or who somebody who's already in the market? Uh, how to, should they manage these uh, factors? I mean, looking at it from maybe a psychological sense as well as seeing maybe giving us an example or so. Yeah, no, I mean, this market, uh, you know, is uh, with a lot of involved with a lot of people. I yeah. mean, there are a lot of reactions, overreactions, and underreactions. So within these contexts, I mean the trading psychology is very important you have to control uh, major negative uh, emotions which can uh, negatively influence your trading uh, issue. once you put your trade into action uh, the major emotions you have yeah. to face is I mean uh, as you know it's the fear the greed and you sometimes you'll be angry with your trades <laughs> okay. uh, your ego coming into yeah. action so what you have to master these uh, I mean uh, master skills to control these emotions and you have to free yourself from these emotions and be a rational investor rather Definitely. than being a 
uh, gambler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I think the rationality is what really comes in, and you know, uh, and you know, being just irrational about things does make it. There's no point to it. Like you rightly put, you know, it's like becoming a gambler. It doesn't have any yeah. sense to it. So I think also going in for an investment, the rationality is one of the major things. So Shadi, I mean, in terms of this fear, greed, anger, uh, how are these managed? And you know, can you maybe give us a strategy yeah. uh, that you maybe something that you follow or something that we could start off following in terms of having a trading strategy i can uh, explain this with uh, with a trading example yeah. one. i mean like if you take uh, lanka aluminium as a trading uh, uh, strategy now we based on technical fundamental uh, considering all these analysis are done sentimental mm -hmm. analysis now we have uh, decided to let's say enter the trade at 71 levels and uh, we have a profit limit to exit at 90 and let's say if uh, trade goes against us we'll cut our losses at uh, if it goes below 60 so now this we have a trading strategy and a plan now okay, okay. so this is what you planned prior to you look at the market taking consideration all the research etc yeah. uh, now you come to the level where you look at okay this is where i like to exit yes. sorry i beg your pardon this is where i like to enter, enter. the uh, the counter or the, the the asset and then this is where i like to exit and because yes. you have a psychological or you put yourself a target yes that's and right. then of course to manage your risk Correct. factor on the bottom end you're going to have a stop loss here, so it? you have already planned the trade okay so already planned that yeah feel, now yes. now you trade the plan <laughs> yes. that's what you have to do now so so now what you can see is uh, let's say the next uh, after a few weeks you can see the price has dropped it now the trade is already working against yeah. you and it's uh, getting closer to your stop loss level where you have decided already where you will cut your losses at 60. Okay, now the fear factor is working now. Okay, this uh, is where you now, I think most now people would start exiting. Exactly. So, yeah. Now you might think, okay, this is going to, I'm going to lose. Yes. Uh, it's anyway dropping, so I should not wait till 60. You might stop your trade, but you have to control your fear. Stick to your plan, your right. trading plan, stick to it, and you just wait. And you can see after a couple of, uh, couple of weeks, I mean, you can see the trade has moved above from that level. Now it's it has turned to a profitable trade now, and you can see now it has already reached your uh, profit limit where yeah. you have decided this is the exit point where I'm going to exit. But also you can see, Ranu, the price has crossed above uh, your limit uh, 90. You have originally yeah. planned to exit, exactly. but now it's uh, trading somewhere 100. Now yeah. comes the greed factor. Yeah. Don't be greedy. I mean, you <laughs> have already planned. This is my exit. Exactly. This return is enough for me. Yeah. I mean, exit your trade because we know after that uh, Lanka Aluminium uh, went up to 100. Again, it came back to 78. Yeah, I know this is one of my favorite counters as well. And I, in the past, and I've, I've noticed this trading. and. I'm, so a lot of people are holding on, expecting a lot more. So uh, what happened was, uh, you know, uh, the the counter didn't move as much as they wanted. I think, you know, as it holding a portfolio, like you rightly said, maybe, you know, exiting at that right point would have made a lot more sense to most people. That's yeah. right, Rano. I mean, like if you have controlled your emotions, the fear <laughs> yes. and greed, you can see with this example, I mean, you are making a 27% return yeah. comfortably. And this is how you make the best out of being mm -hmm. as an active investor. Best because you did your analysis, assuming we did all our analysis, then we have our trading plan, mm -hmm. we, then we stick to our plan, right. controlling all the emotions. This is how we uh, plan the trade. Wonderful. Uh, but, uh, you know, like it's, um, you know, uh, this is all very, uh, you know, I, I like uh, holding on to these uh, strategies. Uh, I mean, then going on with these strategies, this has really worked for uh, for most traders, I've noticed. But, you know, how do you, uh, how do you become more disciplined? I think the most difficult factor would be to become disciplined. And any, any pointers on that fact, uh, how you uh, maintain your discipline when it comes to these uh, trading strategies? Very true, Ranu. I mean, when you decide you have to when you decide you want to stick to your plan, mm -hmm. I mean, that needs a lot of trade discipline. I mean, uh, you you have to plan. I mean, once you plan, this is my plan, then you have to stick to your trade, uh, stick to your plan. So how you can do is, I mean, most of the traders, uh, we, we professional traders, they have a good practice where they have a trading journal. I mean, this trading journal that you will, then you can review your past trades and improve gradually. I mean, uh, over the period, you have to be very patient. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, you, you should focus on your uh, trading journal and uh, past trades. You should review them. You should find out uh, where the, the places where you went wrong and you have to improve gradually. Wonderful. So this, this you can 
improve your discipline. So this is about self-assessing oneself and going back on the trading strategy. Okay, wonderful. So what else would you? Uh, also, another factor is you have to focus on your win-loss ratio. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some people, I mean, uh, especially beginners, they want to make profits uh, uh, overnight and uh, <laughs> with a single trade. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. the general sentiment. So, but uh, you can't make profits overnight. Yeah. That's the fact. Definitely. I mean, from a single trade uh, or from a single trade, you ha this is you have to do a set of trades and you have to focus on your win loss ratio. For example, let's say you pl plan about ten trades uh, within a month. I mean, out of those trades, I mean, uh, you might win about six trades or maybe five trades. So you have to continuously focus on your win ratio i mean that's how you improve your this uh, and that's where all that research and trading strategies will come into play i'm sure so at the end exactly. uh, uh, finally what would you like to add in, in well, terms of well well uh, what i would like to emphasize rano you you plan i mean this these trading strategies are very important where you have to plan your trades then you stick to your plan and also free yourself from all these negative emotions what we spoke about as you, as you can see how we uh, elaborated it with uh, lunk aluminium yes. and once you uh, master these skills over the period you will be a very successful trader. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, that is very informative and uh, thank you everybody uh, for tuning in. Uh, have a very good uh, have a very good day. Bye bye.